Um, so my first caterpillar across the spine was pretty loose. My second caterpillar across the spine was much more secure because I had um, the first caterpillar to support it. And I didn't really need to use as many clippy things. And I'm sure you don't need to use six. I was just really wanting it to be steady and secure. Sorry I keep pushing it to the side and like looking around my camera. Um, but yeah, my second caterpillar across the spine was much tighter, which was really nice. So I, I kind of suggest, well, I don't know, here's the thing. Because I did three caterpillars across my spine. I did the first on the top, the second on the bottom, which made my text block pretty much set. And then I did the middle one, and it wasn't super tight, and it wasn't really, it wasn't tight to the signatures, it was kind of raised. Um, and I think that that was okay, that the, settle, the center one was a bit looser, because the edge ones are where you're getting most of your structure for your book. So, I actually think that starting in the center, when sewing a text block, I'm skipping across here, um, when doing a text block will help um, the text block be secure so that your caterpillars will be tighter on the sides. So I think that if I do another book, when I do another book with the caterpillar stitch, when, I'm spanning across with my next stitch, um, when, yeah, because this is a really cool stitch, um, that I'll do that. I'll do the center caterpillars before I do the edge ones so that they can be as tight as possible. So that they're giving me the most structure. Okay, now I'm going with my... I just spanned with my left thread. And I'm going behind the seventh... Going through the seventh space. Going in the left. Because my last thread just came out the left. And you can see, obviously, that it gets quite repetitive. Which is nice, because this is such a complicated stitch that it's nice to have a little bit of repetition so your brain can take a rest. I mean, it still needs to be engaged. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's nice that it repeats itself. So that you're not doing a different, a completely different stitch every step of the way. But it's kind of like your left foot and your right foot are just a little bit different. You need to make sure that each step is the right step. Um, a word about waxing your thread. Doing the caterpillar stitch, I found that waxing your thread is invaluable. It is absolutely wonderful to have waxed thread doing this stitch um, because what waxing your thread does it um, makes it so your thread won't tangle as often <laughs> because you're pulling this through so many holes and if you know thread and sewing you know that it's easy to get tangled when it's pull being pulled through something. And this is so complicated that it is no fun to have a knot and say, ah, I have to go back and do that over again, or I have to cut my thread and put a new thread on. And Any little mistake in this can be really discouraging because it's so much work and mental effort that you really just want to 
help yourself out in the beginning as much as you can so that it's easier on the way. I just spanned across with my right thread and I'm going to go back up to go through the eighth space coming in the right. So I guess that could be a hint too. Going through going into and behind for your cord pack the same direction that your thread's on. So this is the right thread, so I go behind on the right. <laughs> I had to, when I was doing this, I was trying to figure out any sort of pattern possible that I can, because with um, written instructions, it's all very numbered and lettered out, and there's no shortcuts. It's, you know, every step, and you have to do it right every step. But I like having shortcuts, mental shortcuts, mental shortcut reminders, so that I don't forget, and so that I don't have to rack my brain every step of the way. So I say, oh, I just came from the right, so I'll go in the right. Choose the right. Da -da 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 -da.